Well, here we are. Thursday, April 20th, 2023. I'm Larissa. This is my video diary. It's about 7 o'clock in the morning. Slept in a little bit today. Yeah. Slept in a little bit today. Yeah. Watched some basketballs yesterday. Oh, nobody came for Reiki drop-in. Whatever. But I stay open. You know, I stay open until... Just in case someone shows up, because I advertise it, you know. Doing my due diligence. It's really like a... I offer it, the drop-in, for two reasons. One, because I offer... I offer private sessions, and so, you know, I want to give people an opportunity to come try it out. Um, and also, it's just, it's a, it's a community service, you know? There's so many people walking around, like, like zombies, right? Reiki is a nice way to be able to connect with yourself again, huh? It is, at least it's been my experience, right? I never feel bad after Reiki, right? Never... Never. I feel good, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Dogs love it. So many dogs. So many dogs. Like, dogs know. They, they like... People are like, oh, you must have food in there. That's what the dog... Like, no, that's not why the dogs go. <laughs> hey, because if that were true, they'd be trying to get in all the restaurants, right? Yeah. And that's not the case. Yeah. Oh. I'm working on something yesterday and I fucked it all up. Oh. Well. Just. Sometimes. I don't know what it is about. You know, fabric that is the same kind of fabric or whatever. It worked with a bunch of times. It's just there's something about that piece of fabric. Right. Yeah. So. So. The fabric. It. When I was sewing it. It was, it was, it was, um, pulling on the bias under, underneath the, underneath the presser foot. And so everything was a little bit, was a little bit twisted and just, I couldn't get things to line up right. Anyway, anyway, a bunch of wasted time and wasted material. Well, it's not going to be totally wasted. I'll, you know, I'll cut the pieces. I'll, I'll take out the, the usable piece pieces, right. And there'll just be a smaller piece of fabric that I can use for something else. And then the, the pieces that are cut those up and those will go into this into my stuffing bag for whatever yeah I got some other stuff done that I wanted to get done that I needed to get done that was gonna be useful yeah so I did that made some curtains that I needed to make for my back room yeah Oh my gosh. So the other day I got this letter from Branson Forte Fire District here saying, oh, we got to gonna vote on whether or not people of Happy Valley are going to pay more money to fund more fire persons at, at the fire station or the fire station is going to have to close and it's not safe and blah, 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 blah. And I was saying that what they described, the situation they described, oh, we can only afford to have one person on and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay. So who are all those other firemen that I see down there all the time? I don't know. Whatever. What, whatever. 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 But, you know, so Omar and I bought our house fairly recently, you know, like five years ago here. And most of the people that live back here have lived in their houses their almost their entire life or have had their, you know, since, since the sixties or whatever, or have, you know, they have had their house given to them by their parents or whatever. And so their taxes are so much lower than mine. Right. And now it's like, I don't even want to vote on this, like, because I don't feel like, I don't feel like I ever have a voice in anything I vote on around here anyway, because what it really comes down to is, oh, how much more money are we going to try to take from people like Larissa and Omar, right? Because the rest of these assholes have these really low taxes and Omar and I have to pay for everything, right? 
And so it makes me really resentful of all my fucking neighbors. Especially when like Omar and I take care of our property and we pay a shit ton of money to do it. Right. And neighbors have sabotaged it down at the end of the street. She has all these, she, we had, there were, there were concrete bags that were, that were reinforcing our bridge, right. On our driveway that were, that were taken out, right. We had to replace them and it was damage that was done to our bridge. Cause that bitch was mad about whatever bug she had up her ass. And she has them sitting out there at the edge of her, at the edge of her property. And she painted them like neon colors so I could see them. So I, you know, I can't prove that she did it, but I know that she did it. Right. She's just this cranky old bat. And that's the way that the people around here have been. And now we're, you know, we're going to be asked to pay more money because of course they're going to vote. Oh yeah, we'll pay because we need, we need fire people. Of course we need fire people, but Omar and I are going to end up paying more than everybody else. As always. And they're it's just fuck them and their kids. I it just I I, I, I don't it's so frustrating. These people act so shitty to me. Right? Old fucking Hippie Californians just <sighs> it's not my fault that your kids can't afford to buy a house. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. And then whatever this fucking stuff Joe Biden is signing, it's, you know, people who over, over, um, you know, risky loans or whatever. He's giving he's giving financial incentive to people to to take out take out mortgages that are bigger than what they should, right? And if you take out a mortgage that is I didn't read all of about it, but this is this is this is what I took away from what I did read. Right? It's incentivizing taking out a bigger a big it's 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 like Oh, you're investing in the future you're saying, oh, I'm optimistic and I'm going to make more money. So I'm going to take out this big loan that's like right at the edge of, you know, and then people who are who, who make more conservative. And I'm not talking about conservative li liberal. I'm talking about people who, who, you know, live within their means. Right. Are penalized oh, because they're because we're the ones that 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 manage our money. And so you can depend on being able to take money from us, right? Oh. Yeah. Just so disappointing. Uh, I saw uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is going to is going to run. Has announced his candidacy for. He's going to he's going to challenge the Democratic nomination over Joe. They'll give it to him. No, they will. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. On name alone. I, I, you know, I don't know anything about him and his politics other than he has the last name Kennedy and that's what he's, that's, that's what he's running on. And I saw some, some quote that he said that he's been, he's been censored in some way or kept from, from being in public sphere for 18 years or whatever. And it, it's like, okay, whatever, you know, <clears throat> Like I said, I don't know anything about his politics. Um, he's got he's got Kennedy suaveness and and you know the 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 um, the clout of having had like your entire family assassinated, right? But I'm sure the Democratic Party is looking for some way to save face because. They've become so fucking ridiculous. Nobody trusts them. So uh, there was some poll that said 14% of Biden voters support Robert F. Kennedy Jr. It's like, hopefully, I hope, hope they don't kill you. Hope they don't, hope they don't assassinate, hope the CIA doesn't assassinate you. Jeez. But like I said, I don't know anything about his politics. I don't. I don't know anything about his politics. I'm a registered libertarian. I can't say that I um, have been happy with what they 
put out there last year. Is that Jojo, Jo Jorgensen, whoever the fuck she was. Who the hell was she? Where did she come from? Jeez. I didn't vote for her. No. And besides, like, the mouthpieces that, that the Libertarian Party has, has chosen to to highlight in, in media are obnoxious. It's like shooting your own goddamn self in the foot. It's like, Candace Owens is so annoying. Ben Shapiro is so annoying. So annoying. I can't stand either of them. I can't stand either of them. And they, they you know, they're, they're basically just Republicans. Really, they are. They're just Republicans. I, I, I can't say that there's anything about what they say that, that resonates as libertarian philosophy, right? Libertarian philosophy is very much based in, in uh, personal accountability, right? And the rights of the individual. The rights of the individual. I've read, I, I, I've, I've read a lot of it, right? But they're just pushing the same line as the Republicans. And I don't want to be associated with either of them. So it's hard. Then the other loud libertarian that's out there is Jordan Peterson, but he's not even a, he's not, he's not a U.S. citizen. He's a Canadian. So it's like, you can't, it's, it's incongruous, right? You know, when it comes to voting, it's like, there's, there's no, there's no, I, there's no party that I fit in with. There isn't. Finally, it looks like, you know, hearings are turning around, Senate hearings are turning around, and and Fauci's being called out for his bullshit. Well, if that's going to be the case, where where are the indictments, right? Because he, he lied about the gain-of-function research that was being funded by the U.S. in conjunction with China, right? So there's like a collusion between, between U.S. government and Chinese government over over that whole that whole debacle, right? So all these people who have pushed these policies that are now being being proven ineffective and harmful, right? By the same organizations that pushed them. And I'm talking about the vaccines, the COVID vaccines and and all of the COVID mandates. Where the they're they're gonna have to be there's gonna have to be repercussions over that, aren't there? Right? There's gonna have to be indictments. When you look at the 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 scope of of mental well being or lack thereof on a global scale, but just look at a national scale here in the United States. Oh my god. It's tantamount to torture. How how are those not crimes against humanity? Right? How is it not? How is it not? Right? It's just all mind blowing. Totally mind blowing. Oh my god. Oh. <clears throat> how many families have been destroyed? Right? How many relationships? How many individuals? Right? How many how many chronic patients have been have been delivered to the pharmaceutical industry by by because of because of government because of government regulation right i 
That's why like I, I've been I follow Sunil Dehan, Doctor Doctor Sunil Dehan on 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 Twitter and and on the YouTubes, and it's what he's talking about. It is what he's talking about. And I agree with the majority of what he says. Now, I agree with everything that he, that he says, actually. Although, I guess I can't say, I, I, I don't know everything that he says and thinks. But the stuff that he puts out there, I, I, I agree with it. I, um, I'm not as stringent as he is in, 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 uh, you know, a personal, personal discipline about, you know, but I do believe in wellness through balanced diet and, and exercise. And by exercise, I don't mean, you know, breaking your, breaking your back at the gym. I mean, just like having some activity in your life. I don't think it, I don't think that, you know, it has to be going to the gym, Right. I think that's a bunch of, that's a load of shit too. And I think that there's a lot of illness at the gym as well. I belong to a number of gyms and, um, yeah, not all those people are healthy either. There's a lot of, the, a lot of those people are on a lot of substance, right? I do yoga a few times a week. I'm back up to doing yoga like two, three times a week. And I'm, uh, I can almost do, you know, I'm almost able to, uh, to do the full practice that I, that I was doing pre pandemic. And once I build that stamina back up, then I can start adding my dancing back in and, <clears throat> you know, I don't need to go pay a shit ton of money to some gym to do that. Right. For the yoga pants fashion parade of of snobby bitches who have nothing better to do than than to you know flaunt their butts in front of in front of steroid pumped up guys at the gym. Thank you. Oh. My skulls must all be in the dishwasher. I got the Google Station mug. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I just don't have time for that shit. I don't have time for that, that scene anymore. Oh, when I was going, when I was going to Bladium, I didn't go to lift the weights or anything because there were just a lot of skeezes out there, you know, on, on the floor. And I didn't want anything to do with them. So I took the classes. I, in the classes, I, I took a Zumba class. I took a yoga class. I took a weightlifting class. <laughs> but ultimately, I ended up just doing my own yoga practice. Because the woman that the, that yoga class was just, it was, it was way overfilled and she didn't give personal attention. And, um, that bothered me. I found it distracting when there were, there were a lot of people in that class. She didn't offer modification or explanation of asana, right? She just got up in the front of the class and her little yoga pants with her little butt and, um, did the asana and people had, were supposed to follow. Meanwhile, there were people in the class. There were, there was this guy that was always next to me and I talked to him a little bit and he had, he had some serious injuries. He was an older guy and, you know, I'd be looking at him. I'm just like, Oh my God, you're doing that. If it, you're making your injury worse, she never turned around to look at him or anybody else in the class. And it just, I knew what the modification he needed to do was, and I, if, if there was modification I needed to do, I knew what I needed to do, but that's because I've been practicing for 25 years and I've had good instructors, right? All right, beginning, beginning of my practice, I've, I've pract I, I learned from people who were Iyengar certified and there aren't that many people out there anymore who are Iyengar certified, 
right? Most of the people who are, are elderly now themselves. And there are few American practitioners who stayed true to Iyengar practice. You know, they've, they've, they've given everybody, want, everybody wanted to have their own flavor of yoga. And so there's all these weird, all these weird, you know, schools of yoga in the United States. And my, <laughs> I, I'm great, I'm grateful for the instruction that I received, right? And the people that I practiced on, with and under in the beginning of my yoga practice, because I have a very strong foundation. And, you know, because I did go further and, and read the, read Iyengar's works, you know, because he wrote pretty prolifically. I've, I've read Light on Life and Light on Yoga. Yeah, I have. And I know anatomy and physiology from art school. So, you know, I feel, I feel grateful, you know, because his practice, his practice in, you know, is about respect for and care of the body and the sacred geometry of the body and creating sacred geometry in the body to create stable foundation. Right. And that's why props are so important in his, in, in, in Iyengar based practices, because alignment is what is most important. Right. Not, not the, the ego of, of the, of flowing between, between, uh, asana and looking pretty while doing it. Like, <clears throat> that's not what it's about. Anyway, anyway, I mean, I, I anger our based yoga and Hatha and Hatha based yoga, which is highly influ Hatha is highly influenced by Iyengar, um, are, are wellness practices, right? They're not bodybuilding practices. They're, they're wellness practices. Anyway. Yeah. So I practice yoga by myself. It's the last time I practiced in a classroom setting. I was injured by the instructor who was having his own little fashion show and fancied himself a guru and that we were his disciples coming to insight. I'm like, no, dude, no, dude. You're wearing a Grateful Dead shirt and have a bandana tied around your bald ass head. No, you're no fucking yoga guru. And he broke my tailbone. So I just, why was I going to his class? Because it was at 7.30 in the morning and there was good, and there was easy parking at, at the studio where he was teaching. That's why. That's why I was taking his class. Yeah, it was over in Alameda. There was, there was a, another school yoga place over in Piedmont and they had an early morning Ashtanga class. That was very good. Um, Ashtanga, there's, there's another, there's, there's another, you know, guru associated and it's, but it's done in a warmer room. Um, and there are specific progressions that are done over and over and it's very much based. It's very much focused on sun salutation. Um, and there's sun salutation in, in all asana practice, but Ashtanga is really, really focused on the sun salutation. Um, and, and it's, it, it has a, it, it has more, it has, it's, it's more of a fire practice, right? It's not, it's not, a, it's not as hot. It's not done in a room that's as hot as like Bikram. I tried Bikram. I tried Bikram. It was just gross. It was just gross. Bikram was just gross. It was. And then, you know, Bikram slept with a bunch of his students, right? And sexually assaulted a bunch of his students. Same thing with John Friend. And the, and the, and the gal that, that was teaching yoga at Bladium, she, she taught friend yoga. And I'm just like, ugh. She and I talked about it. She's like, yeah, she's like, she's like, she's like, I don't like the, I don't like the guy. She said, after everything that went down at, at the yoga school and everything, and I, I wasn't aware of it, she, you know, she, and I, I looked it up after that. I was like, oh, this is, I'm, I was like, oh, it's like Bikram. She's like, yeah, he kind of went the way, he kind of went the way of Bikram. I'm like, oh my God. Mr. Iyengar and his eyebrows were, were not out doing that kind of shit. No, they weren't. So I just stick with Mr. Iyengar and his Fantastic eyebrows. May he rest in peace. Anyway. Anyway. Getting back there. 
but it's been hard because, you know, I'm also dealing with this injury that was not addressed properly by medical institutions. All right. I've had to fix it myself and I've been using yoga to do it. Yoga and herbal supplement and because there's supplements that you can take that help, um, that help, uh, rebuilding, uh, soft tissue and stuff. But I have serious fascia back there. I have serious fascia issues. Fascia. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Oh my God. Yeah. So since... Since I stopped eating animals, it's, you know, entirely because I, like I said, I had tried adding seafood back in and just my digestion has been awful, awful, awful. And so I've had malabs malabsorption and things too. And I've had other, other issues, but so I stopped and, and, you know, just eggs and dairy. That's, that's the, that's it. That's the only animal products that are in my diet now are eggs and dairy. And it's been about almost two weeks. It's been two weeks now. My poop is normal again. That's all it fucking took. And I would say that my joint pain, I'm sleeping through the night, which I haven't been doing, I haven't been doing for a long time. I'm sleeping through the night and it's just two weeks. That's it. And I'm not saying that, you know, people shouldn't eat meat. I'm not saying that. I'm not, that's not the kind of vegetarian I am, right? I think that there is, you are able to ethically consume animal product. I, I believe that, right? I've never been a vegan, which by the way, I think veganism is not ethical, but that's a whole other, that's a whole other story. And, you know, I know that there are people who cannot digest their bodies cannot digest any type of animal product and no I'm not I'm not chastising you for doing what's right for your body right we're not going there we're not going there my body cannot handle eating animals I can handle eggs but not if they're fertilized like the chickens the chickens up there if I get a fertilized egg fertilized eggs make me sick so that, that's, that is the difference. That is the difference. Right. And those, those vegan products that are heme based, I cannot eat those. Now, if it's, it's pea protein, you know, T or TVP texturized vegetable protein, that's something else altogether. And, and I, I don't like to consume a lot of that just because I think that egg pro protein from eggs is, is a higher quality protein, right? Or, or protein, like from pairing a whole bean, a whole bean and a whole grain is a higher, um, or from quinoa or from soy, that's a higher quality protein than from something that is lab derived in any way. Right. So. Yeah, I try to limit that in my diet as well. But I can't do the heme derived, the fungal heme derived meat substitutes. No, they make me just as sick as meat. And actually it's kind of worse. It's worse, right? Yeah, it has been. Oh, last time I ate those, 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 that, that ultimate chicken product. <gasps> that was terrible. It was terrible. So, Dr. Dand, while I am not as stringent about my about my food consumption, you know, like I'm not going to shame people for 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 having bread. I'm not going to shame people for from from eating their cake because I think all things in moderation are okay. I do acknowledge that there are huge differences in the way things are processed now and you just need to be aware of the quality of the food, right? But I get you, dude. I get you. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I get why you're so extreme. I understand it. I think you're a real doctor. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Draymond Green. The whole thing with Draymond Green. I was asleep. I didn't even see it. I, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see it, but I understand that it was a retribution, that it wasn't just Draymond. Draymond didn't just willy nilly decide he was going to 
stomp on Saboner, that Saboner, it was retaliation for Saboner grabbing ankles, right? And nothing being called on it. <sighs> the suspension. Well, Draymond Green, are you now a, you a folk hero, an NBA folk hero? Yeah. Brooke Lopez, you had a good game. Brooke Lopez had a good game yesterday. I like that Brooke Lopez. I do. I like him. I like him. Him and his brother Robin. I like Robin too. Harry and Hippie Belafonte. Oh, I do. I like them both. Robin and his tube socks. He had a good... I saw, I saw Robin make a basket. I did. Caught the end of that Cleveland game and I saw Robin make a basket in his big old tube socks and his crazy hairs. Brooke. Brooke buying books for kids. Good for you, Brooke. Brooke's books. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. Hope they're, hope they're all good books. Good books are good looks. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, whatever. Whatever, basketballers. Whatever. Big giant men. Except for Chris Paul. <laughs> Chris Paul. Call him C-3PO. But oh no, he looked like R2-D2. <laughs> so I call him R2-D2 now. I, when I see him on the screen, I'm like, oh look, there's R2-D2. Chris Paul. Oh, look at you playing with the big guys. He's a big dude too, compared to me. Everybody compared to me, everybody's a big dude. But he's not, he, he's not like giant like the other dudes are. Oh my gosh. Giant dudes. Giant basketball and balling dudes. I don't even know why I bother to watch. I don't know. I don't know why I bother to watch. I really don't. Why do I watch? Why do I bother? I don't even know. I don't even know. Anyway, finish my tea and make the bed and get showered and dressed and make some breakfast and flip the laundries and then get on with my day. I got shit to do. And then, oh, wait, is it a basketball game tonight, huh? Is there a basketball game? Are the Warriors playing or something? Drag them scrotes across the floor, would you please, fellas? Please. 